نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے یہ جو راستے ہیں جدا جدا یہ معاملہ کوئی اور ہے اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام خاتم النبین وبعد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو انادر نیو اپیسوڈ آف بلڈنگ بریجز بٹوین دا فیتس ود مائی سیلف شیخ رفیق حسین این براٹ یو بائی آئی ٹی وی وی ڈیڈ لاسٹ اپیسوڈ اسپیک اباؤٹ سم کومنٹس اینڈ ریسپونسز ٹو کومنٹس گیون ٹو اس ایز ویل ایز یو دا ویورز your questions and your comments that came through. So, and, and the last of those was about those, the reasons why people embrace Islam. And uh, when we came, you know, we are already, unfortunately, to the end of that. And as with everything else, you know, they say time and tide waits for no man and no woman. So time moves on and that episode came to an end. And we said, as promised to you, that we will dedicate uh, this episode so that we can spend a bit more time because the question that was raised as to why what makes people to embrace islam and you remember we gave a brief snip, a snippet of uh, yusuf islam and uh, uh, who embraced islam who was cat stevens in that last episode and yvonne ridley and we did mention also you know about uh, the 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 soccer star who is well known uh, you know whose name is emmanuel adebayo Uh, the all-time, uh, you know, Togoli's best uh, footballer. And uh, he, he actually, uh, he, was, he was asked this question, but he prepared a, a response uh, which was about 13 points he made. He made about 13 points as to why he embraced Islam. And I think let's get straight into it. Uh, you know, he says, I got 13 valid reasons why and how Muslims are like Jesus, peace be upon him, and the true followers of Jesus Uh, than most Christians believe. So, you know, he obviously came from a Christian background. And I thought it would be nice for us to share this because this is exactly what Building Bridges, this program is trying to do, is to undo the misconceptions, you know, that many Christians think that we are the Antichrist and we don't love Jesus, peace be upon him, and don't believe in him. And here you find that, uh, you know, it is uh, one of the reasons, you know, that our uh, brother Emmanuel says is that Jesus thought that there is only one God and only God should be worshipped, as taught in Deuteronomy 6.4 and Mark 12.29, which says here, O Israel, the God, our Lord, the God is one. You know, so I think this is the first thing that brought, brings him, and this is, what he, this is one of the reasons that he gave as to why he uh, embraced Islam. You'll find that even with our local people, you find that you know, they, if you ask them, they will tell you, yes, you know, even if they are African traditions, that God is one. You know, you know, umudimo. You know, is the one unseen God who is the creator. But the Quran chapter 4 verse 177, and remember we discussed this when we did the issue of, uh, uh, you know, the issue when we're responding to Mario about uh, the concept of Jesus, peace be upon him. So we believed very well uh, as well that, we, that Jesus, peace be upon him, besides that God is one and that, that Jesus, peace be upon him, is just a prophet of God. And if you recall from our previous uh, episodes and our previous discussions, and perhaps, inshallah, in this, in this episode here towards the end, you know, in the last segment, when we're doing the comments and what have you, uh, uh, we will show you the, the various episodes we have done. And we spoke about this in the previous episodes, uh, you know, concerning uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Jesus, peace be upon him, we believe in him and uh, the concept uh, of what Muslims have and the high esteem that uh, the Muslims hold Jesus, peace be upon him, and that we are not the Antichrist, you know. So all these episodes were covered. Um, we have, you know, just this few points where we do differ, you know, uh, with the Christian world. And that's what makes us Muslims. That was what makes, the, uh, you know, the, them Christians or Jews or Hindus. We have the common ground and we have those small areas that divide us. And, and the, this uh, program, you know, tries to concentrate on the common ground. And where, where the differences are there, we respect the differences. Remember, that's what it's all about. You, we may not want to accept those different views, but we will respect it. 
Uh, and this is the Islamic principle, contrary to many understanding. You know, Islam is not a compulsion or a forcing down people's throat as people think. And uh, is, people are portraying Islam and Muslims to be people who want to just, uh, you know, uh, push something down somebody's throat. The Quran is clear, la ikraha fi din. In the Quran, in chapter 2, there is no compulsion in matters of faith. The truth is clear from error. People must use their mind. God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everyone the reasoning faculties. We have the capacity to read, to investigate, to learn, to research. So we must do all this and, and find out where the truth lies and let everybody you know, follow their conscience and free will and be given the freedom and the right to do that. Perhaps just again to reinforce this point because this is very important. You know, don't, don't think that, uh, you know, especially this program, Building Bridges, the aim of this Building Bridges program is not a proselytizing program. We are not here, you know, preaching and evangelizing or if, to use those words. No, we are here to explain Islam. We are here to uh, respond to the comments made about Islam for or against. Uh, and we are here to, uh, to be educated and to educate, uh, you know, about other faiths and about Islam. Uh, and to put, uh, you know, some of the misunderstandings uh, that may be there, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to clear those misunderstandings. And that's what the program is all about. This is actually the aim of the program. Uh, and you find that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if you just take his example where he practiced this, you know, he, his, his, his father passed away before he was born. Uh, his, he was brought up then by his grandfather and his grandfather passed away. And then he was brought up by his uncle, uh, who was not a Muslim. But his uncle loved him and he loved his uncle, right? And his uncle was protecting him because he was from the uh, prominent tribe in Arabia, the Quraysh tribe. You know, if you want to use the, the, the Zulu term, the Induna, he was the Induna or the, he was the chief Induna of the tribe, of the prominent tribe in Mecca at the time, the Quraysh tribe. And he was being protected, you know, because he was starting to preach Islam, that there's one God and we worship only the one unseen God and, and, and that I am his prophet, he was telling the people. And his uncle said, all right, you carry on preaching, although I don't follow your way. But they loved each other. That's the point I'm making. You know, right till his uncle passed away, he loved his uncle, his uncle loved him, and his uncle allowed him to preach his uh, Islam, uh, and he did not force his uncle. He Obviously, he invited him as his duty as all prophets, the duty of prophets and those who follow in the footsteps of the prophets, is to give the message to, uh, to people not to force it down the throat, to just give them the clear message and allow people to make up their mind. So let's come back to this. Uh, the a second reason that Emmanuel gives is that Jesus did not, peace be upon him, did not eat pork as taught in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 and 8. And there's the verses of Leviticus in the Old Testament. And the pig, for though it divides the hoof, thus making a split hoof, it does not chew cud. It is unclean to you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. So here uh, the Bible is saying very clearly uh, also that Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, also mentioned that he threw all the, uh, you know, the swines into the sea. And you find in the Quran, in chapter 6, verse 145, concerning this, uh, which says that, you know, I do not find uh, within that which was revealed to me anything forbidden to one to eat it unless it be a dead animal or a blood spilled out of uh, all flesh of swine. <clears throat> so there comes the, the, the pork again, you know, or anything dedicated other than to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you are forced by necessity, neither desiring nor transgressing its limits, then indeed your Lord is forgiving and merciful. This is the Quranic verse which prohibits, uh, you know, dead animals, carcasses, uh, and even uh, pork. So uh, we find that Emmanuel, in giving his reasons, uh, you know, in, in the interview that he gave, and we are just discussing it here because in the previous episode, you remember one of the, the questions that one of the viewers, I think it was Ibrahim, who sent, and he wanted to know what are the reasons why people embrace Islam. So here, yeah, uh, Emmanuel, uh, you know, uh, the Togolese, uh, f you know, uh, football star who became a Muslim, uh, he is giving his reasons. And the second reason he's giving is the not eating the, of pork, uh, which is, by the way, prohibited in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible as well as in the Quran. It's just not a Muslim thing. And I think maybe that should be something that we must... Uh, also have a, a, perhaps another episode we need to dedicate to this is this whole issue of halal story. 
you know, when you don't eat. And I think that sometimes uh, this, this halal story is misunderstood. And because of this misunderstanding, it gets out of hand and, you know, people start uh, attacking uh, the Muslim concept of halal. And halal, you know, in a, we will do an episode, but just while we're talking about it here, one of the issues of halal, or maybe say the core issue, when we say something is halal, it means it has got no pork in it and no alcohol in it. As one of the main things, you know, is, is that. Which means, uh, you know, in the Jewish term is it's kosher. It becomes kosher. It should be that for the Christian world as well, because the Christian world also should not be uh, eating pork and, and, and alcohol in terms of the uh, you know, Old Testament uh, and New Testament uh, guidelines. So I think uh, when Muslims speak of something being halal, just remember, and this is uh, one of the reasons why Emmanuel you know, says, I became a Muslim and it impressed me because we are following something. Because remember, if we go back to the screen, one of the things... Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, Emmanuel Adebayo said, is that I would like to give 13 valid reasons why and how Muslims are like Jesus, you know, and that they are the true follower of Jesus that most Christians may believe. So, in other words, we are following in the footsteps of Jesus, peace be upon him. What he's trying to say is that by coming to Islam, you don't leave Jesus behind you. You don't say, I'm going to abandon Jesus. You actually continue and, uh, you know, and follow Jesus, peace be upon him, even in Islam. Because remember, we did those episodes, which we will show you uh, later on in the, in the last segment of this program, where we are, this program has been, uh, you know, one of the other key focus of this program is to show the common ground that all the prophets came and preached the same message, you know. And, and this is what this program is unfolding. It's just that what we say happened with time is that over the period of time, uh, people either changed the message of the messengers or they forgot uh, some of the teachings uh, of the messengers that were sent to them. And that's what went wrong. And, and that's why different systems came up. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as the final messenger to bring everybody back to the original teachings of all the prophets from the time of Adam and Abraham and Noah and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, we are continuing uh, with in this episode with the reasons that uh, Emmanuel uh, Togolese, uh, you know, uh, superstar, soccer, football star, what made him to embrace Islam and he was giving his reasons. We went to point number five. Let's go to point number six. And uh, he says another thing that, uh, uh, you know, motivated him is that Jesus, peace be upon him, and other prophets of the Bible prayed with their heads to the ground. You find in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, it is stated, And Jesus went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. And Muslims are also taught, you know, to do this. You'll find in chapter 3, verse 43 of the Quran, uh, God talking to Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him, telling her, Oh, Mary, be devoutly obedient to your Lord and prostrate and bow with those who bow in prayer. Now, again, you know, this bowing down and praying, uh, we, as I said, in the, we had a whole pamphlet we were, as we were discussing just now that, uh, you know, we have a whole pamphlet on Salah in the Bible. By the way, we have a whole pamphlet and we did, I think, a two episodes, two part episodes on Hajj in the Bible. And also, you know, it's going to be coming very soon, the time of Hajj. Or the pilgrimage in the Muslim world, you know, there's an annual pilgrimage once a year. To, uh, we are entering in, you know, very soon, we'll be entering into the months of Zil Hijjah, you know, uh, the last two months of the Muslim uh, calendar, the 12 months of the lunar calendar, uh, will be coming into the months of Hajj. And uh, although August is Women's Month, it will, we'll also have to then touch on, uh, on the Hajj, you know, and we did a whole episode of the Hajj, the Muslim pilgrimage in the Bible. You know, and, and, and showing the common ground, showing that, uh, you know, this is not a Muslim thing. You understand? It's not just that something which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought unique separately for the so-called Muslims. Uh, it was the practice of all the prophets. 
you know, because it's the same God who sent the, the prophets to preach the same message, you know, over the period. Uh, and so uh, that's the sixth point. Let's go because time is moving. Let's see how much ground we can cover. The seventh point is he's talking about the general attire that if you look at all the prophets, you look at snippets and different movies and documentaries, you know, that Jesus, peace be on him, had a beard and he wore this tobe, means this long, uh, you know, uh, long garment, flowing garment, which uh, the men also wear. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's number seven. I think uh, before I go to number, I thought uh, maybe uh, let's do number eight. It's on the screen and we'll discuss them separately. And Jesus, peace be upon him, followed the law and believed in all the prophets. You'll see Matthew five seventeen. And do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. You know, that will apply because somebody may turn around and say, you know, we were quoting Leviticus earlier on, which Emmanuel was quoting about, uh, it, it tells you not to eat pork and all those things. And they'll tell you, well, that's the Old Testament. That's the law of Moses and, and it's abolished. But Jesus is saying in this verse, Matthew five seventeen, and do not think, think not that I have come to abolish the law of Moses or the prophets before me. No, I have come to not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So now let's discuss uh, uh, these two issues. Uh, as far as the, you know, uh, beard and, you know, dressing, the tobe, the tobe is, you know, you see me, with, or Muslims with the long kurta, it's like a West African dress also. Even those who are not Muslim, you'll find in West African attire, they will dress the men even with the long, uh, you know, uh, uh, garments. Um, uh, this is an Arab tradition as well. Now, you know, on a light note, uh, while we're on this issue, uh, because uh, what Emmanuel is trying to say now uh, by this, this is, you know, different people come to Islam uh, in different ways. Now, these are some of the things that attracted him. And I think that what he's, there's a common thread running between what Emmanuel is saying here. And what he's saying is that he finds that uh, the Muslim ways, which as taught by the Quran and the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the ways of uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. And I may add, was the ways of Moses and the ways of Abraham as well, peace be upon him, the ways of Abraham. Now, on this issue of the dress and all that, I want to tell you two things, right? Uh, because it's important, because we are sharing, uh, you know, this information to show that we Muslims are not unique or different in this. It's, it's, it's actually an Abrahamic uh, Moses and Jesus tradition, uh, or, you know, even in the dress and attire. Uh, I remember once I was traveling and I was in uh, coming from Lesotho or Botswana. I think I was coming from Botswana, and uh, I stopped in uh, I don't know what's the name of the town, not Zanin. Uh, I'll get the name of the town. I stopped at this town from the border there, and. Uh, to meet one of my friends there and while he was talking to me he had a shop on the and we were outside his shop on the road and he's looking behind me and i was wondering what's he looking at the next minute uh, you know there are about four or five Afrikaners, you know surrounding and i got uh, scared i said what's going on now and he's telling me no they say they want to talk to you so i said okay so i turned around and uh, they're telling me because i was dressed like this you know with this tobe, and they say look where can we buy this attire so I got surprised. I said, why are you Muslim? They said, no, we are not Muslim. So I said, then why, why are you going to wear this attire? He says, no, we're from a, a church up here. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we've read and we came to realize that this was even the way Abraham, peace be upon him, was uh, dressed. You know, Abraham uh, with his head cover and beard and the long robe. And we felt, and this is how Moses and Jesus were, were dressed, peace be upon them. So we felt we want to follow this way of dressing. Now look at, uh, he says, this is the teaching, this is the church, the, the priest uh, findings and the priest wants his whole congregation to dress like this. Now I'm just trying to say that on the other hand, there are people out there, Christians and whoever else they may be, who are you know, objective and who, when they research, go back into the original scriptures, they're finding this, you know. Uh, and I said again, maybe on another light note, coming to the dress factor, you know, there was an incident uh, uh, that happened in our country that two uh, South Africans were going to America. I'm talking a good few years ago, you know, with all this 9-11 and 
terrorism and what what airport security uh, these two south africans were dressed also like this they were going to america but you're not going to believe what happened they had visa and everything when they landed in new york they these two were taken away by security police and sent back to south africa deported just because they were dressed like this so you know again as i said our democracy thanks to our south african democracy and our freedom of religion is being practiced it's not just being preached you find in the west they talk on the statute books they want to claim that they are democracies but france doesn't want the woman to wear the headscarf and other countries don't want the people muslims to uh, you know in in uh, uh, in uh, some of the european countries i think it's in sweden and also in holland you know uh, they do not want the muslims to put minarets on their mosques or make the azan Uh, yet they're claiming that they are democracies and allow religious freedom, but they are suppressing. In our South African democracy, it's working. It's being practiced, and uh, so they said, uh, "Let's let's take this uh, American ambassador up for why he did." So we they approached us, our institute IFRI, and we took the matter up, and the, we asked the American ambassador. This is the question I asked him. I told him, "Mr. Ambassador, you send these two people back to South Africa just because they were dressed like this." Now may I ask you, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, wasn't he dressed like that also? And he's smiling. I said, Jesus didn't have a suit and tie. Uh, and then I gave him the punchline. I told him, so tell me, when Jesus, peace be upon him, on his second coming, when he comes to New York, if he comes there uh, dressed like this, are you going to send him back also on the next plane? And he started to laugh. I say, but you see, on a serious note, Mr. Ambassador, you see, you guys are discriminating wrongfully. You know, you're getting scared. You know, don't paint everybody with the same brush. So, coming back to uh, the the whole issue, what we are trying to say is that, firstly, what the world needs is more understanding and more tolerance. And but what Islam, the ways of Islam. Uh, uh, what Emmanuel is saying is the ways of uh, the, pro, uh, you know, Jesus, peace be upon him, and it's also the ways of Abraham, I'm adding. And now coming to the second one, about Jesus followed the laws, uh, you know, and to not, not I came to de- abolish the law, but to f- obey the law. Now you'll find if you go to the screen, uh, this is in Islam as well. In chapter 3, verse 84, you'll find it is stated there, Muslims, Uh, I thought, say, this is in the Quran, say, we believe in Allah and that which was revealed to us and that which was revealed to Abraham and to Ishmael and to Isaac and to Jacob and the descendants and the tribes, you know, the descendants of the tribes and what was given to Moses and Jesus and that uh, given to the prophets from the Lord. We make no distinction between any one of them and we bow down in submitting to God to him. So you can see this is also in, in, in Surah Baqarah in chapter 2 where it says in Jacob and it means mentions the tribes in Africa and in Asia and all over the places. So this again is showing that the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not come to destroy the laws all right, uh, or anything uh, of the previous prophets, but to fulfill them. And, and then again, uh, talking about dress, I thought I'll just mention the two points together. Jesus' mother Mary, peace be upon him, was also dressed model, modestly with a head covering and a long abaya. You'll, you'll see that in photos. And you'll, this is also found in 1 Timothy 2, 9, in Genesis chapter 24, 64, 65, and in Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. And Muslim women are also told to dress modestly in the Quran in chapter 33, verse 15. This is in terms of the dress code. And I think you will find a lot of, in Africa in particular, a lot of African uh, cultures uh, and African traditionalist cultures, they find that they, even the women are dressed modestly. This is, you know, this is in keeping with what we call traditional values, and if I may add the word, the divinely ordained values of dress. You know, because you know, again, while we're on this point, uh, just to because these were series that we did, which we'll show you in the last uh, segment, which we will be coming to, or the, the various episodes we've done. That God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of the Quran, he sent prophets to every nation and every tribe. This is the Quran. In Africa, there were prophets. There were African prophets. There were Chinese prophets in China. There were Indian prophets in India, European prophets. God sent prophets to all the nations and all the tribes. This is an Islamic belief, you know, and they taught the same, you know, kind of values. And, but what we did say is that people over time, they forgot 
the people forgot the message of the messengers. That's unfortunately what happened with time. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to bring it all back together and to link it up. And that's what we're doing in this Building Bridges program. You'll notice that what we are showing in this Building Bridges program is that there is a common thread. There is a common main thread that's running between all the religions of all the, which the divinely or, or, you know, ordained religions where prophets were sent. And you'll find that even in those books that are extending, there's this common thread, which is what the, you know, the focus of this program is all about. And is that as humanity, you know, we can hold on to these common threads. Let's go to the next one. Um, then it's about fasting. You know, he speaks about a common problem, and I won't go and read all that, you know, in the book of uh, Exodus 34, uh, 28, in the book of Daniel, <coughs> uh, 10, 2 to 6, you know, 1 Kings, uh, uh, you know, 19, 8, and even in Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1. It's all about fasting. And by the way, again, and Muslims fast, you know, for the uh, whole one lunar month, for 30 days or 29 days, depending on the lunar cycle, uh, in chapter 2, verse 183 of the Quran. And then we did a whole section on fasting in the Bible. And these pamphlets are all available, free of charge, you know, and in the, in the next segment, when we go for our break, we will actually, you know, give you our details. And these are available to you to show you fasting. The Muslim fasting, as we fast, is also in the Bible, you know. And then there's another very interesting one about greeting. Uh, you know, we just, because of time, we want to go and cover as much as we can. Uh, you find that uh, in Jesus, peace be upon him, told that when you enter somebody's house, you got to greet them with peace also. When you enter in chapter uh, 10, verse 5 of Luke, you know, when you enter people's houses, you must say, Salam alaikum, peace to the, to the people, and also to greet the people in the house with peace be upon to you. And Muslims do exactly the same, you know, to enter their homes. In fact, in the Quran, uh, it, you know, you'll find the verses 24, 6, and other verses of the Quran. In fact, the Quran uh, teaches this etiquette um, that you do not enter people's houses without permission. Uh, you know, you knock and you knock, and if nobody opens, uh, you, you go away. Maybe you disturb, even if you know they are inside. But if they're not responding, maybe they're busy with something, you got them at a time where they're not ready for any visit to come in now. Uh, one must not get offended. One must, uh, you know, go away, uh, respect people's privacy, and come back another time, or make an appointment to come back. So, I, you know, I hope that uh, you are understanding what Emmanuel is saying as to getting the gist of... Emmanuel is trying to say that the, the way of life of the Muslim uh, is the way of life of Jesus, peace be upon him. And I'm adding, was the way of life of Moses, peace be upon him, and the way of life of Abraham, peace be upon him, and all the prophets that were sent. Stay tuned, we'll be back for the last segment to complete. <laughs> Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And well, this, you know, everybody who's watching us regularly you will know that every time, even when we start the program, we say assalamu alaikum, means peace be unto you. And when we come back after the break and the ads, we welcome you back and say assalamu alaikum. Well, why I'm repeating this? Because Emmanuel, uh, if you look at his third reason, if you go to the screen, he says another reason why he's, he became a Muslim is that Jesus, peace be upon him, greeted with the words, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be with you. That was the greeting in, in Hebrew, Shalom Alaikum. In Arabic, Assalamu Alaikum. You find this in John chapter 20, verse 21 as one example. And again, Jesus said, Shalom Alaikum, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And Muslims also greet each other this way. There's many places in the Quran, chapter 13, verse 24, Salam Alaikum for you, preserved and persevered in patience. Excellent indeed is the final home. In fact, that verse of the Quran and many other verses of the Quran actually tells you that uh, even in, in paradise, you know, uh, that uh, the greetings will be assalam, assalam, you know, peace be unto you. I must say, you know, as a, again, as proudly as a South African as I am, you know, we, we the, what we may call uh, the apartheid generation, unlike the freeborn generation, you know, who came after 1994. We grew up in the struggle years. And, uh, 
you know, it was uh, those days when everything was, you know, segregated and us and you and us and them and superior and inferior and black and white and blue and green and all this. And it, even religious wise too, there was discrimination and what, what, what have you. But today, our democracy with all the other problems we may have, by the way, I'm not a politician any longer aspiring even to be one. No, we have committed ourselves to rather use uh, the common ground of, of religious, uh, you know, uh, and moral up, uh, our, our righteousness of people to bring that together so that we can stand united as a moral force against the evils in society. So by no means am I condoning some of the wrongs that are going on. And tell me, in which country there's no wrongs? You tell me. So we all have our wrongs and our challenges. But let's look at the good side of our democracy. You'll find that one of the uh, good aspects of our democracy in South Africa is that now in the schools, in the past, you only had to, you were only taught Christianity. Christianity was the only religion that you were taught and from school and everywhere else. When we used to go to school in the, in the 50s, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We had to read the Lord's Prayer, although we were Muslims. You even had to, you know, people uh, had to even change their name and call yourself, have a Christian name. Uh, even if they were not Christians. But you find today the, in, in, in the classes in right living and whatever so topic they may call it, at universities, even in corporate worlds, you find there's a big, because of our democracy, which is so beautiful and working in terms of this religious freedom, it is, it is imperative that the teachers and all make the students and the learners know about other religions. And you'll find that even in our greetings, you know, we have 11 languages, Dumelani and Sabwana, Namaske, Namaskar, Khoemora, all these different ways we must learn to greet. Because when you learn the languages of people, that's another way to build bridges between people. And you'll find that today, you know, when I walk around, I'm always in this attire. And you find that it, it, it's so heartwarming that so many of our fellow South Africans, whether they be Afrikaners or British, European origin, uh, you know, African, Hindu, they say, Salam, Salam, uh, you know, Salam Alaikum. They are greeting. They are not Muslim, but they know the Muslim greeting. Well, let me just, this, what uh, Emmanuel is saying, this was also the greeting by which Jesus, peace be upon him, greeted his people, you know. Shalom Aleikum in John 20 and many other places, you know, peace be unto you. And I think uh, this is again proof. And I think one of the things that made Emmanuel uh, to look at Islam is that uh, whatever most, the Islam, the practices of Islam, you know, he started off with the belief in one God and not eating pork and, and all that. And, uh, you know, this, this greeting that the, whatever the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, you know, came with... Uh, under guidance, obviously, of God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is exactly the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. And I think I, I, may, I may be repeating myself on this point, but I think it is an important point because this is from what I pick up, uh, you know, after uh, going through what uh, uh, Brother Emmanuel was saying, is that there is this, uh, and he's right about it, there is this perception uh, among our Christian, uh, you know, counterparts and brothers and sisters that, uh, you know, we are, Muslims are very different, uh, and, uh, you know, from Christians and Jesus, peace be upon him, his is a different way, and we are completely a different sort of uh, species or kettle of uh, fish or whatever terminology you want to use. And he's trying to say, actually, it's the other way around. What we Muslims are doing is actually what Jesus, peace be upon him, that was his lifestyle. So keep that in mind in the greetings too as well. Let's go to the fourth point. Uh, this is quite interesting, you know, uh, the word insha'Allah. In the book of Romans, chapter 9, I think it's supposed to be 22, that uh, what if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known? That's the Bible talks about if God wills, God willing. And Muslims too say this before doing anything as taught in the Quran in verses chapter 18, verse 23 and 24. It's called insha'Allah, right, uh, in Arabic. Uh, God willing. Now, th this God willing, you know, is, is a term uh, which I, I must say many Muslims will be surprised uh, who are going to be, who was watching that on the screen right now, that, uh, you know, they didn't know that inshallah is also in the Bible, that uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, also used to say, and his disciples learned it from him, that before they want to do anything tomorrow, they don't say, I will do this tomorrow. They will say, I will do this tomorrow, God willing. 
Inshallah, if God wills, I, then I, I will do it tomorrow. Because we don't know whether we'll be alive tomorrow. Isn't that true? Because God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who gives life and He takes life. Uh, and so you find this, again, just, in, just digressing slightly from, uh, you know, this is all the points that comes in our mind uh, from the points uh, that Brother Emmanuel is putting in there, what made him to become a Muslim and what motivated him. And, but again, I'm saying all this because this program is also to explain Islam uh, to our viewers who are not Muslim, to share them our way of life and how we do things. And, uh, you know, these small phrases like, uh, Assalamu Alaikum, you know, what you heard, the greeting, Insha'Allah. Uh, and I'm sure you viewers, you go, I, I'm challenging you to go and ask any of your colleagues in your workplace. You know, you could be a working teacher, taxi driver, uh, in, in just a housewife, or you can call yourself a home executive because you are even more than that if you are a housewife. Islam regards uh, motherhood and home, uh, you know, bringing up children as one of the greatest uh, uh, tasks and, and virtues. of our, That's why the mother is held in such high esteem. And by the way, it is the month of, uh, you know, August, uh, is the month, uh, Women's Month, International Women's Day, and it's a Women's Month as well. And perhaps we will, in our next episode, you know, uh, show what Islam has to say about women. Why I'm saying this, that even children, Muslims, our children, from the time they are born, the mother, they're hearing these words. When the mother is eating, she says, Bismillah. When they hear greeting, they say, Assalamu Alaikum. When they're talking, let's, we'll do this tomorrow, Inshallah. So, uh, shukran, jazakallah, thank you. You know, so they are hearing, learning this. And by the time our children in our homes are two years and three years, you know, they, are, they are know all these words. They are learning all these words. Inshallah, salam alaikum, jazakallah, shukran, you know, bismillah, in the name of Allah, and all these things. So it is part of the home. It is part of the lifestyle of a Muslim home, which was part of the lifestyle of Jesus, peace be upon him, and all the prophets, by the way, you know, who were, who were uh, in this way. Now, again, uh, the, another point, if you go to the screen, point number five, and we did actually a whole episode on this, but Brother Emmanuel says he, what he liked about it is that even in the Bible, he talks about the cleanliness and the washing of the hands and feet before we go to pray. And you find this in the book of Exodus, chapter 40, verse 30. And 30. It's also in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts talks about Paul and his disciples. You know, they cleanse themselves uh, before entering the tabernacle. Uh, and, uh, you know, and this is the, that the, the verses that you see there is all that's in Exodus. That they, before they entered the tent, they put the water for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. You know, before and Muslims do the same as well. Uh, you know, uh, you find that uh, uh, this is, isn't it strange that showing that this is a divine injunction uh, that, uh, you know, even Moses, peace be upon him, and, and, and the Prophet Muhammad and Jesus, peace be upon him, the three of them, they, they, they were in, uh, in the Middle East in, in arid, you know, uh, lands where the water was very scarce. Let's say in desert. It was in, in desert, uh, you know, conditions where it's very hot and there's not much water, and it, isn't it strange that uh, somebody where there's not much water is going to insist that you must wash, you know, before you pray, someone will say you're wasting water. It's trying to show you that these, a normal person won't think about that, which shows this was not the thinking of these prophets, these injunctions. Uh, you remember when God called, uh, Moses went to Mount Sinai, and he went to meet God, and God, in the Bible it is stated, remove thy shoes for wherein thy put thy foot is holy ground. You know, this is commandments, uh, you know, which, and then here also, you know, it is stated that Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet in Exodus 40, uh, 30 and 31. And you'll find Muslims is the same, that before we go to pray, we, you know, we, we, we do the ablution, you know, to, and to cleanse. Our, and we did a whole series, by the way, and we will talk about that. Uh, I'm sure I won't forget in the, in the last uh, segment. We will show you some of the episodes we've done. I think we will, it's important. We have covered so many episodes. And by the way, we get, we, get, we get requests. We get always people sending us emails. You know, give us the list of you. We missed so many programs. And uh, what are the other topics that you'll discuss on, on this building bridges? So, inshallah, we will go through that as well in the last segment, uh, you know, to discuss this issue. But we will carry on. Uh, we have only on point number five. Uh, we did a whole section on Salah in the Bible. The, the Muslim prayer 
in the Bible. And this is in a pamphlet free of charge to you. These pamphlets are available free of charge. Compliments of ITV and IFRI. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Uh, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, as we, uh, in the last segment, I did promise you, let's take down the uh, details on the screen uh, for those of you who want to maybe phone in or write in for those free pamphlets on fasting or hajj or, uh, you know, uh, prayer in the Bible. Our, the Muslim prayer in the Bible, the Muslim fasting in the Bible, the Muslim hajj in the Bible, or whatever information, uh, t- there's the information, compliments of IFRI and ITV, you know, it is available to you to build up these understandings uh, and build the bridges of understandings between us. And that is what, uh, you know, this program is all about. And perhaps maybe while we at it, uh, you know, if you want to be knowing uh, uh, what to be doing, let me show you some of the... Uh, uh, you know, topics, because many of you may be wanting to know the topics that we will be, that you wanted to do. So we will go into those topics uh, for you to give you, uh, here's the topics there uh, uh, that we have done. And, uh, you know, you could get it from the ITV website or you could get in touch with us at IFRI, Muhammad, peace be upon him in Hindu, Jewish and Christian. This was one episode. These are all available on DVDs. Muslim fasting in the Bible. There is it there. Prophecy of Quran and Islam in the Bible. Misunderstandings about Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the greatest leader in the world. Woman in Islam and in the Judaic Christian scriptures. I think that went over two episodes. The Ten Commandments in the Bible, similarities with Islam and African traditional religion. Who is the Antichrist? That Muslims are not the Antichrist, part one and two. And reply to these you know, certain questions that were sent by uh, the various uh, groups. So this was there. And, you know, did Jesus die on the cross? And the mirage, the incension of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as mentioned in the Bible. So I can, you can see, you know, it says, is there some of the other ones here? Uh, you know, salvation. These are the Christian belief series and the ascension of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So these, these are available, you know, and the concept of uh, Abraham, the, the religion of Abraham, Muslims form of the Abrahamic faith. There is also the one on uh, similarities and Muslims view, what the, what the Quran says about Jesus, peace be upon him. So all these things are available, uh, you know, to us. So I think these things, uh, we must all look into it. And I think we need to get back uh, to our uh, last episode, the program, where we are trying to talk about, um, you know, what Brother Emmanuel said, you know, but we're just giving you an idea. You can even, uh, you know, get in touch with us and find out all the episodes. But the whole idea is to bring, bring about this understanding and get this literature and spread it around. We even have these banners uh, that are with us that we will give to you, that we are one humanity. But I think um, perhaps at this point, we will come back in the, at the tail end and finish uh, you know, the two more points of Emmanuel and why he became a Muslim and his reason. But I think it's appropriate at this point to, to tell you how important it is for Muslims and Christians to understand one another, to have these uh, building bridges and interfaith dialogue. Here's a, a lovely snippet uh, of what's, how it's working in America. Despite all what we're learning, the negative things in the media, but the people on the ground are building those bridges and having these interfaith dialogues. Watch this snippet. We'll be back after this uh, snippet. There are too many people getting too much face time on television who claim exalted status for Christianity and who are demeaning other faith traditions, particularly that of Islam. And my friends, this has got to stop. There is nothing in the Gospels There is nothing in the teaching of Jesus Christ that says anything about burning the holy texts of other traditions. It is not there. The proposed burning of the Koran is obscene. It is not the work of peace. It is not the work of understanding. It is not the work of building bridges. It is insanity. And we can only imagine what Jesus would have said about Pastor Terry Jones and his Burn the Koran campaign. 
I think he would say, this has got to stop. Followers of Islam believe that the Quran is a collection of revelations received by the Prophet Muhammad from God about 1400 years ago. They believe that Muhammad was the last of a series of prophets and teachers and messengers that included Adam, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, all names revered by us as well. The word Islam means peaceful surrender to the will of God. The Quran was written at a time when the Muslim people were being driven from their homes, persecuted, and killed. The Old Testament was written at a time when Jewish people were being driven from their homes, persecuted, and killed. And religious scholars will tell you that most holy scriptures have stories of war and violence in them. Throughout history, most faiths have used these texts to justify violence. And if there's anyone in this room at this moment who's thinking that I've got it wrong, after church today, pull out your Bible and look up Psalm 137. And you'll see that our own text has passages that can make us uncomfortable. But also, like the Bible, the predominant message of the Quran is of peace and care and loving God, justice, care for the neighbor, care for the stranger. In the Bible, we have thou shalt not kill. In the Quran, we have whoever kills another, surely he is killing all of humanity. And whoever saves the life of another, surely he saves the lives of all humanity. These are words of peace, words of faith, words that could save the world if we would take them to heart. The second thing you can do the next time someone sends you one of those emails demonizing Islam, delete it. Don't forward it. Don't participate in the stereotyping. Don't give in to your fear. It's okay to be a little afraid. We all have those emotions. Just don't give in to it. Don't sign on for it. Don't focus on this tiny group of extremists who commit acts of violence. Focus on the hundreds of millions of Muslim people in the world who are people of faith whose priorities and concerns and families are not so different from your own. And third, when you think of Muslim people, think of individuals. Think of the professor at Ohio State. Think of the engineer at Honda. Think of the teacher at the elementary school down the street. When you think of Muslim people, Remember those who died on 9-11, not the hijackers. There was only a handful of them. Remember Mohammed Sunhami Hamandi. He was born in Pakistan. He came to the United States as a small child with his parents. He played high school football. He went to college. He became a part-time ambulance driver. He died, this Muslim young man on 9-11, trying to rescue people and save lives. When you think of Muslim people, remember Mohammed Salahuddin Cloudhuri. He was a waiter at Windows on the World, which was at the top of the World Trade Center. He died that day. His wife had their baby two days later. One of the ladies at the 8.30 service this morning said to me after, maybe we should declare September 11th, buy a Koran and read some of it. Well, the, there you have it. You know, the, right in America, 
uh, you know, this is a priest, she's, a, she's an ordained minister, and, uh, you know, even when they wanted to burn the Bible, you know, in one of the churches in America, and the, 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 in that area, the other church groups, they said on that day, they're going to start reading the Quran. I mean, when they wanted to burn the Quran, sorry. Uh, you know, one of the, the, uh, the, the priests in America wanted to burn the Quran. Uh, the, the other priests in the area said on that day, if he's going to do that, we're going to get our congregation and everyone to start reading the Quran in the, in the church. To read the Quran in the church, to, you know, to oppose what he's doing. So I think we must not fall into the trap. Uh, of uh, branding everybody with the same brush. The world needs this, this understanding. You know, we need to understand each other. Uh, I think this is very important for us to come to know what each other is saying. And I think if we go back now to our uh, screen there and let's take the last two points uh, as to why, uh, you know, um, uh, our brother Emmanuel uh, accepted Islam. Another, uh, and because of its way, is the issue of circumcision. And I'm not going to read the whole thing for you on the screen. You have got it there. You know, it is the Jesus, peace be upon him, in, in Luke chapter 221, was on the eighth day he was circumcised. You find in the Bible in Genesis chapter 17, verse 13, it is stated that this circumcision was an everlasting covenant that Abraham passed down. And even in the Quran, it talks about, you know, following the religion of Abraham. So, I th and the prophet, the, the, you know, Abraham was also circumcised when he was eight years old, according to the tradition of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, this whole issue of circumcision, <clears throat> was another reason uh, that, uh, uh, you know, Emmanuel Adebayo said he embraced him. And maybe let's look at his last reason. And he says, Jesus, peace be upon him, spoke Aramaic. And in God, Arabic, uh, you know, God is called Eli, which is pronounced as Allah, Elah, or Allah. And Aramaic is an ancient biblical language. It is, you find people in Ethiopia, Assyrian, Babylon. You know, it's between Arabic, Hebrew, and uh, these uh, languages, what we call Semitic languages of Akkadian. And Aramaic, Allah, and Arabic, Allah, are the same. So he means uh, what he was trying to say, uh, uh, Emmanuel at the back, even Shalom Alaikum, Salam Alaikum. Look how similar it is, you know. I'll give another example for those Muslims who know, you know, we, we, where the, the place Abraham stood and prayed, it is called, you know, it's called Maqam Ibrahim, Maqam Ibrahim in the Quran, the place where Abraham stood and when he built the Kaaba. In, in the Hebrew Bible, in the, in the, it's called Shalom, it's Maqam Ibrahim, Maqam Ibrahim. Just a slight change, but if you hear it, it's the same. So we hope, inshallah, that this helped uh, the, the brother Ibrahim and others as to some of the reasons why people embrace Islam. And here, Emmanuel Adebayo, you know, uh, he gave his reasons. And the bottom line of his reason is that when he felt that by coming to Islam, he's actually more following more the original teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, rather than abandoning the teachings of Jesus. Because Muslims love Jesus, Muslims are not the Antichrist, and they're following in the footsteps of Jesus, Moses, uh, you know, uh, and Abraham and all the prophets may peace be upon them. Uh, keep the emails coming, keep the questions coming, keep the comments coming, build the bridges of understanding, call us, email us, we can come in your local area and, and get everybody together and have a better understanding and build a beautiful South Africa and a beautiful world where we can live in harmony despite the fact that we are from different religions. Till we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے یہ جو راستے ہیں جدا جدا یہ معاملہ کوئی اور ہے